clean internal combustion engine development. However much we like to think we won't remain dependent on the internal combustion engine for our transport needs, for the foreseeable future, it's going to be the main way that we get around. If we're not going to get, around, get do away with it, we have to find ways of making it cleaner, less polluting. So we're working with Ford to develop much cleaner internal combustion engines. This one here hasn't got spark plugs in it to set light to the fuel mix. It's got a laser, and the lasers fire thousands of times every second. It's a much cleaner burn of the fuel, much more efficient burn of the fuel. So you get more miles per gallon, and the exhaust gas is far cleaner. Laser ignition, we're doing that with four. So that's one example of our internal combustion engine work. The construction industry is the single heaviest demand on our planet's resources. It's the dirtiest part of our engineering. And we're never going to get away from it. We're always going to need new buildings and new roads and other new infrastructure. So the only way to reduce its impact on the environment is to use more recycled materials. So we have a research group looking at ways that we can use old demolished buildings and old road surfaces and reuse them in new buildings. And also using materials that have been used elsewhere in the world and converting them into building materials. Green glass as a road surface is quite a, uh, quite a uh, common use now. That's a big area of research. Smart functional materials. We're good at this stuff, our material science group, we're not going to see any of those things today. Um, they're in a separate building, but they're the second best in the country in the, our research, in various areas, second only to Cambridge. And really what we're good at is thin films, which might not mean much to you, but these are smart functional materials. These, are, these will enable the next generation of communication devices, electronic devices and optical devices. These films are also being used to improve the efficiency of solar cells and make them a viable component in our energy mix for the future. So new materials enable new and exciting things, particularly in microelectronics. Bioengineering, we've spoken about quality of life, and I think the most direct connection you can make between engineering and quality of life is bioengineering. Engineering supports healthcare. I mean, to be honest with you, every part of modern healthcare is enabled by engineering. If you took the engineering out of the Royal Hospital down there, there wouldn't be much left. There'd be no kit in it, there'd be very little, there'd be no infrastructure, there wouldn't be any buildings actually if you took the engineering out. In fact, if you took the engineering out of the Royal Hospital, you'd probably be left with just a few people in the field picking herbs. Everything is based on an engineering product. But, putting that to one side, what we're doing here is working in two main areas. You can see them here, the first is the eyeball. We have a group of people, we've got a lab filled, filled with pigs' eyeballs in little jeeps and devices, they're monitoring, they're setting the mechanical behaviour of the eyeball. There's quite a lot of medical diagnosis which is done on the behavior, mechanical behaviour of the eyeball. Glaucoma is the most common one, and many of you will have had the test, I guess. Um, when you go for an eye test, sometimes they puff air into your eye and it bounces back and they measure the bounce back. The elastic properties of the eye tell them whether or not the person's got glaucoma. If they don't really understand how the elastic properties of the eye vary from person to person or across an individual eye, then sometimes they misdiagnose. There's a lot of false positive diagnoses for glaucoma, which cost healthcare millions, if not billions, across the world. And there's a lot of false negatives, where people suffer unnecessarily when they could have been treated early on. So it's a big problem. So we're, we're now experts in the complicated, it used to be thought of a very simple structure. We're now experts in the very complicated nature of eyeball mechanics. Uh, the other one is orthopedic implants. We're, we're making enhanced performance implants that last longer out of really advanced alloys 